Hello, today we're reacting to some more Kurzgesagt. Today we have what happened before history, human origins. Where did we come from? What did we do? How are we here? The big questions. Let's get into it. The world we live in feels normal, ordinary. It feels like this is just how humans exist yes. and always existed. Normal feels but weird though, it's not. to be fair. Never before have we humans lived in a world as sophisticated and engineered to our needs as today. Oh, it's unrecognizable to forget about ourselves from a hundred years and not ago. Worry about survival. Food, shelter, security, all of this is more or less taken for granted. But we're a special few. For more than 99.99% .99 of human history, life was completely different. Very and true. Very, very true. And a lot of us that are privileged enough to live in developed countries and just have all of these accessories. We have electricity, we have running water, we have heat in the winter, we have food, we have clean water, let alone running. <laughs> um, we have heat, we have clothes to wear, the shoes on our feet. We have schools that we can go to to learn. We have vehicles that take us to those schools. All of these things seem so simple and we take so for granted in modern developed countries that it's very easy to forget that there's places on this planet where people do not have those things. There's places on this planet where people unfortunately have to drink out of dirty puddles because they don't have anywhere else to get water. They don't have electricity. They're cold at night. They're starving. And that's not cool. There's no excuse for that. We can do better. And there's no such thing as just one human history. Yeah, and how many proto-human species were there too, right? Our story begins six million years ago, when the tribe of Homonini split and our relationship with the apes ended. Six million? 2 8 million years ago, the genus oh. of Homo, the first humans emerged. We like to think of ourselves as the only humans, but this is far from the truth. Where we stood upright. When we, Homo sapiens sapiens, came into existence 200,000 years ago, there were at least six other human species around. Homo sapiens sapiens? Cousins of comparable intelligence and ability, which must have been incredibly scary, kind like of the like Neanderthal. living with aliens. Some of them were very successful. Homo erectus, for example, survived for two million years. That's... Ten times longer than modern humans have existed. Respectable. The last of the other humans disappeared around 10,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. We don't know what caused them to die out. It was us! Mo it was us! It was us! Yes, there's no proof of that, for sure. 100%, we don't know. 100%, we never will. But, it was us. It, wa it was us. Just, it was us, guys. Come on, people are horrid. We are horrible. <laughs> as a species, as a whole, we don't like things that are different than ourselves. I mean, we can't even get along with ourselves. And then you start throwing things like race and culture into the mix and religion. We, uh, we go nuts. We're crazy. A lot of us have, have so much conflict and so much hatred and aggression in our hearts. And it's so sad because not all of us do. Some of us realize that none of that stuff matters. There's more than enough to go around. But from an evolutionary standpoint, it does kind of make sense that we're hardwired that way in a sense. I'm not saying it's right. And I'm not saying that has a place in today's world. But humans are designed to be extremely competitive. And we cannot get along with ourselves. All you have to do is have a slightly different belief or a slightly different appearance, and humans fight. It's just its just fact. It's what's happened in the past. We're getting better as a whole. We are getting better, but we suck, and we really suck bad. So take all of those complications, right, and add on top of it a different species, not just a different, you know, race of species, but a whole different species. Yeah, we killed them for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. 
modern humans have at least a few percent of Neanderthal and other human DNA, so there was some mixing, but mm -hmm. certainly not enough to be a merger between species. Ah, So okay. we don't know if our cousins went away because they lost the battle over resources or because of a series of minor genocides. Either way, only we remain. Or both. Back to the beginnings of humanity. 2.8 million years ago, early humans used tools, but did not make a lot of progress for nearly 2 million years. Until yeah. they learned to control fire. It took us a while, fire but we got meant there. cooking, which made food more nutritious, which contributed to the development of our brain. It also produced uh -huh. light and warmth, which made days longer and winters less gruesome. Yeah. On top of that, it not only scared predators away, it could also be used for hunting. Mm -hmm. A torched wood or grassland provided small animals, nuts and tubers, that were pre-roasted. <laughs> From 300,000 years ago, most of the different human species lived in small hunter-gatherer societies. The pre-modern microwave. They had fire, wood and stone tools, planned for the future, buried their dead, mm -hmm. and had cultures of their own. But most importantly, they spoke to each other. It was Probably like 150 kind of people? Language, less complex than ours. Per society, if, if you will. Machine, how far would we be able to go back, steal a few babies, and raise them today without anyone noticing that they're a bit different? There is <laughs> That's much an debate. Question. <laughs> Anatomically modern humans emerged 200,000 years 200, 000, ago. 200,000, yeah. 70,000 years is as far as we could travel back and still snatch a behaviorally modern human. Okay, why? Before that, Explain that, the babies would probably lack a few crucial gene mutations necessary to build a brain with modern language and abstract thinking oh. abilities. Okay. At some point around 50,000 years ago, there was an explosion in innovation. Tools and weapons became more sophisticated and culture became more complex because at mm -hmm. this point, humans had a multi-purpose brain and a more advanced language to communicate information with each other effectively and down to the last detail. Okay. This allowed much closer cooperation and is what really makes us different from any other creature on Earth. Yeah. Not our comparatively weak bodies and inferior senses, but the ability to cooperate flexibly in large groups. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely what sets us apart, right? Our bodies, as amazing as our bodies are, they're nothing super special. They're not crazy. We are nothing in strength compared to an ape. We are nothing in speed compared to a cheetah. We cannot survive harsh colds on cold. Wait, no. Unclothed is the word I was looking for there. We have to figure out a way to. We have to overcome the limitations of our bodies and extend our usefulness through tools and influencing our environment. And many of us, well, the vast majority of us can't do everything alone. Actually, no one can. And when we start pooling our combined resources, our combined experience and knowledge, that's when we get truly wondrous things. You could spend your entire life from your moment that you are old enough to carry a tool, learning and building, and you will never build a huge skyscraper in a major city and have it be inhabitable and safe. It won't happen. It cannot be done by one person. You need a huge group of people. We have to cooperate. And that's absolutely what makes our species stand up. We fight. We do. As I said earlier, we're pretty terrible sometimes. But we also cooperate much better. Unlike, for example, rigid beehives or intimate but tiny wolf packs. Mm -hmm. As our brain evolved, we became able to do something life had been unable to do up to this point. One, expand knowledge quickly. Two, mm -hmm. preserve the knowledge gained over generations. Three, build on past knowledge to gain even deeper insights. That's a really good point. That's an absolutely really good point. All of the knowledge that we have is meaningless if we cannot pass it on to future generations. And at a certain point, you start to hit the limitation of what is our memory capable of? What are we able to tell through stories, through song, through just general talking to our offspring that they can then take with them? There's a hard limit there. When we start documenting it, 
we start writing books, we start carving into tablets, those types of things, all the way up to the modern world where we have the internet, right? That is what seriously takes it up to the next level. And as far as I'm aware, with some very limited exceptions, we're the only species to do that. I think that certain things like bees and other insects, ants, um, will document things like here's a path, this is the way to go, that type of stuff. But I'm talking, you know, on our scale, we're the only type of species that does that. And that's what really sets us apart. We can build over generations. This seems daft, but until then, information had to be passed on from generation to generation, mostly through genetics. Yeah, just which like is we not kind of talked about. Still, for the next 40,000 years, human life remained more or less the same. Mm -hmm. There was little to build upon. Our ancestors were only one animal among many. Building a skyscraper without knowing what a house is is hard. I but use that same to be arrogant and not knowing what a house is is hard. I use that same example of a skyscraper. What? But while it's easy to be arrogant in our attitude to our ancestors, this would be ignorant. Humans 50,000 mm. years ago were survival specialists. Yeah. They had a detailed mental map of their territory. Their senses were fine-tuned to the environment. They knew and memorized a great amount of information about plants and uh -huh. animals. Uh, yeah, they had they a make lot complicated tools that more required dangerous years of careful training and very fine motor skills. Their bodies compared to our athletes today just because of their daily routines and they lived a rich social mm -hmm. life within their tribe. Survival required so many skills that the average brain volume of early modern humans might even have been bigger than it is today. Oh, wow. As a group, we know more today, but as individuals, our ancestors were superior to us. Can't but argue then, with that, around honestly. 12,000 years ago in multiple locations, humans developed agriculture. Everything changed very quickly. Before, survival as a hunter and forager required <laughs> superb physical and mental abilities in all fields from everybody. With the rise of the agricultural age, individuals could increasingly rely on the skills of others for survival. Yeah. This meant that some of them could specialize. Maybe they worked on better tools. Maybe they took time to breed more resistant crops or better livestock. Mm -hmm. Maybe they started inventing things. As farming got more and more efficient, what we call civilization began. Agriculture gave yep. us a reliable and predictable food source, which allowed humans to hoard food on a large scale for the first time, which is much easier to do with grains than meat. Oh yeah, for sure. The food stock required protection, which led to communities living together in tighter spaces. As, uh, oh God, who is the guy that made that video? The, the history of the entire world, I guess. Oh boy, I can't, Bill Wirtz. Bill Wirtz was his name, as he put it. You need people to build the houses who are going to live in the houses so that way they can make the food. So that way they can feed the people that are making the goods that people are buying. And then more people will come. So you need more houses and the cycle just repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. First, early defense structures And that's society. Built. The need for organization grew. The more organized we got, the faster things became efficient. Yep. Villages became cities. Cities became kingdoms. Kingdoms became empires. Mm -hmm. Connections between humans exploded, which led to opportunities to exchange knowledge. Progress became exponential. Yeah. About 500 years ago, the scientific revolution began. Mathematics, physics, astronomy, biology, and chemistry transformed everything we thought we knew. It's kind of funny how right around the time that societies got comfortable and food supply became readily available and abundant, that was about this time, right, where food was just all over the place. It was no longer, generally speaking, a huge concern. You didn't wake up in the morning and the first thing on your thought was, how am I going to get food today? Suddenly, there's a lot of free time for people to sit and think and use those brains for other things. And that's where we have the explosion of innovation. The Industrial Revolution followed soon after, laying the foundation for the modern world. As our overall efficiency grew exponentially, more people could spend their lifetime contributing to the progress of humanity. Yep. Revolutions kept happening. The invention of the computer, 
its evolution into a medium we all use on a daily basis, Look and the rise line. of the internet shaped our world. It's hard to grasp how fast all of that happened. It's been about 125,000 generations since the emergence of the first human species. Wow. About 7,500 generations since the physiologically modern humans saw the light of day. 500 generations ago, what we call civilization began. Dang. 20 generations ago, we learned how to do science. You want to hear something mind-blowing? This is obviously the case, right? But... Thinking about it and contemplating it for a second is kind of mind-boggling. Every single one of us that's alive today, every single person out of the almost 7 billion people on this planet has a relative that did this stuff. Every one of us has somebody in our bloodline that was part of the group that first planted food. The first started agriculture every single one of us every single one of us has someone in our bloodline who was the first to basically be part of the renaissance to start thinking that's amazing to me we all have those shared milestones in our bloodlines we all share that someone painting their hand on a cave wall way 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 back that's in all of our bloodlines and it's super obvious that that's the case. But when you really sit and think about it, I don't know, it just blows my mind. And the internet became available to most people only one generation ago. Mm -hmm. Today, we live in the most prosperous age humanity has ever experienced. Heck, as far as the internet goes, I grew up basically without it for a good amount of time. You know, I didn't have reliable internet access until I was... Huh. I don't know, 18, 19, 18, 18, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, when I lived at home with my parents, we had internet on and off. It was dial up. It was garbage. It was unreliable. You never knew when it was going to work. And when it did, it was super slow. And if someone called your house phone, it kicked you off of the internet. Um, it was, it was pretty brutal. And when I turned 18 and I moved out of my parents' house, I got DSL for the first time, which was a little more widely available at the time. I don't remember what our speeds were, but that was when. So even me and my generation, it was readily available to some of us, but not a lot of us. We have transformed this planet from the composition of its atmosphere to large scale changes in its landscape and mm -hmm. also in terms of the other animals in existence. We dominate the we planet. We light up the night with artificial stars and put people in a metal box in the sky. Some have even walked on our moon. What is that? Is that the, that staff thing? Is that a reference to, um, that looks so familiar and I can't place it. I don't know. We put robots on other planets. We've looked deep into the past of the universe with mechanical eyes. Mm -hmm. Our knowledge and our way of acquiring and storing more of it has exploded. We're the amazing. Average high Star Fox student today knows more about the universe than a scholar a few centuries ago. Humans dominate this planet, even if our rule is very fr It's scary. I keep saying things ahead of when they're being said <laughs> and using examples. I don't think I've seen this video before. <laughs> wow, it's actually getting kind of scary at this point. Two centuries ago, humans dominate this planet, even if our rule is very fragile. Mm -hmm. We are still not that different from our ancestors 70,000 years ago, yep. but your lifestyle has existed for less than 0.001% of human history. I like my lifestyle. From here on, there's no saying what the future holds for us. We're building a skyscraper, but we're not sure if it's standing on a solid foundation or mm -hmm. if we're building it on quicksand. It's a wondrous Let's world that, that we're building. Now. The next time you miss your train, your burger is not hot enough, or someone cuts in line, remember how special this made-up human world is. <laughs> Maybe it's not worth being upset about all those little things. Yeah, when you okay, think of it that way. this was our first take on making a history-related video. It was great. It was absolutely great. Thank you, guys. This was perfect. I loved it. I especially love the comparison of the generations. How many generations have there been approximately since 
we've hit all these milestones. It's not something that you think about very often when you, but when you put numbers to it, it. <laughs> anyway, this was great. Curse Gazog, as always, hits the nail right on the head. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.